make a start. Good evening, councillors, others. Sorry for the slight delay due to uh, technical issues there, but uh, let's crack on. So thank you for attending this meeting of the Finance and General Purposes Committee. Um, first item on the agenda is apologies for absence received. Thank you, Chair. Um, so Councillor Peter Breen, due to council work commitment. Councillor Jeff Franklin, due to illness. Councillor Nick Gray, due to a personal commitment. And the Mayor and Mayoress, due to a travel commitment. And Councillor, there's a request this evening for Councillor Mallet to substitute for Councillor Franklin. If members could agree, that's going to be the substitute. Okay, so we have a proposal. Councillor Mallet substitutes for Councillor Franklin. Do we have a seconder? Second. All those in favour? That's agreed. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Okay. Next item is declarations of interest. To receive any declarations of disclosable pecuniary interest from members in respect to business to be transacted on the agenda. Any declaration? No? no. Thank you. Next is minutes of the Finance and General Purposes Committee from the 15th of January 2024 and to consider any matters arising from those minutes not covered elsewhere on this agenda. So there is an extra sheet that's uh, been circulated to insert in the minutes. Are there any matters arising? I just want to pick up on um, the supplementary uh, actions log. Um, small fonts, so I'll try and uh, yeah. work, work out what's in it. So on the second action, which relates to the bulwarks and Boulders Green play area, yeah. um, I just wanted to, um, in terms of the action itself, which one of these pieces can be picked off. So, benches on the butts and future maintenance position, well that's part of a project that I'm undertaking um, through the Heritage and Townscape Committee, so I think that can be um, crossed out on, on this action. Yeah. Um, then funding contribution from Southern Water, we've had that answered now. Um, ex gratia payment of 15,000 towards a play park project has been confirmed. Um, partial refurbishment option, and the final bullet, which is when and how um, will full consultation be undertaken. Both these points are included in the project that we're going to talk about a bit later. So I think uh, that is an action. Um, we might even want to consider closing it now that we are looking at um, the activity um, and also we're talking about the um, SLA, aren't we, later on as well. And then the other action I just wanted to pick up on was the um, FG 0923.5 that relates to the live streaming etc. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to add in another update which is there's a meeting arranged for next Tuesday the 27th discuss how to embed processes into business as usual for all council meetings and at that meeting uh, I'm there with uh, Councillor Mallet. Okay. The other item on that log is the Facebook page. Yeah. Any updates? Uh, sorry, no, no. Do we want to? I proposed, I did try last time but we felt keen to try again but I I propose closing it. I'm closing the item. Closing the action. The action. Okay. We can only log so many times. Okay. So this log is a work in progress, which will be updated and added to, and bits yeah. deleted as we go through. Mm -hmm. But it's, I think, it's useful to see it at each meeting as a reminder of uh, where we are. Any other items on the minutes to raise? Could I just ask under payroll? Mm -hmm. uh, 124.3. How is that going? Yes, no, very well. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah it's fine. I've got it set up in uh, January. Okay. And so the new provider has run the January payroll and okay. February now as well. Excellent. And that's saving you a certain amount of time. That's saving me time and also the, um, the worry of not getting payroll correct. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Any other items to raise on these minutes? So is someone prepared to propose they be accepted or move it? Seconded by Councillor Black. All those in favour? Thank you. Thank you very much. So the next 
next item is item four, public participation. 20 minute session set aside for members of the public to make representations at the meeting in respect to business on the agenda. Uh, individuals should not exceed five minutes. Do we have any? No request, Chair. No request? No. no. Okay. I thought we did have a request. Um, uh, no, Councillor Lee will be participating as the, per the standing order. Okay. But we couldn't participate in the item if we choose to. Right, item five, finance and assets working group update. Mm -hmm. uh, committee to consider a report from Councillor Zuka on the progress of the working group to date. Attachment two. Okay. So you, you've got um, a written report, uh, and I'll just pick out um, aspects of the progress that we're making rather than go through all the detail you've got in front of you because I'm sure everybody's read it. Mm -hmm. um, so on progress as i mentioned before we've got two work streams in um, in train at the moment work stream one which is councillor green and councillor daniel carter um, have, they have developed a first draft of an asset data, data sheet what this will do is present a summary view of all stc and stbf assets above a set of individual documents for each asset the individual documents that will be developed will have three main parts in them and that will cover the legal, the asset specific and the financial aspects for each asset. Workstream 1 is also working with Karen to agree a code of costs um, model but that will be, um, and, and when that's adopted, but that will be dependent on the software, the financial software package we choose. So we know it's a requirement Karen has signed up to doing it with uh, Councillors Green and Councillor Carter, but we're waiting for the decision on the software package. Workstream 2, um, that's myself, Councillor Wiles and Councillor Gray. We've been gathering and reviewing the various title and lease documents for the assets. From a number of searches undertaken by a number of people, it's been possible only to locate approximately 50% of the key documents. Um, we're able to focus on the documentation we've got, we're working through those, but it is a very slow, tortuous process because of the detail uh, and the history around some of these documents. But what it is doing is flagging up a number of issues that ultimately will need to be discussed, particularly with Burnham District Council in due course. Um, broader considerations. Proposals have been developed by Councillor Wiles for the HR committee to consider, uh, and that's how we might resource roles relevant to the management of our assets. These are detailed in the report, but will ultimately be subject to approval by the full town council in due course. So there are options there, and if Colin wants to talk about those. Got an opportunity now, Colin, but they are quite detailed in there. Yeah, so I, I prepared a draft report for the next HR committee. I don't think we have a date for that as yet. No. Um, but as you know, the asset officer recruitment didn't result in a, a, an appointment being made. Um, part of the reason I think for that was that it was a 12 month contract. So, what I'm going to propose is that we look at that being at least either a permanent contract or for a longer period <coughs> um, and to try to find someone who can um, fit the description, the job description in terms of management of assets and taking forward the, the role in the long term. I think it's fair to say that the council has not managed its assets effectively in the past and we do need someone who can come in and look at everything that we own how it's managed, the rentals, the issues about stock disposals or stock purchases as necessary, a proper asset management strategy in other words, which most organisations would have. Um, I think the proposal I'm putting forward is that we should look at that post being partly self-funded so that this person will bring in some additional rentals. We need to look at the guild hall, the bookings, but also rentals on the other assets and the empty assets that we have, like Fishergate and Boatman's Hill Chapel, um, the market, the banks and so on. 
uh, but also looking at utilities, the bills that we're paying for gas, electricity, water, etc. See if there's any savings that can be made there, and that will be a probably a one-year hit, but it will um, lead to ongoing savings over time, hopefully. And we're looking at someone who has that expertise to come in and do this building to begin with, and then if that's successful, to look on other buildings in the future. So. That's the draft proposal, but we will be bringing that to HR, and then if HR agrees, it will come to full council for the decision. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, <coughs> two questions related to um, this information. First of all, this um, brings in some kind of fixed fee contract with the legal expertise and also the rapid review. Is that going to is that likely to influence the person specification? Or a full-time asset manager because that may flag up things that you're perhaps not aware of or may flag up certain things already being covered for the asset officer as, as an officer, asset manager yeah yeah i think yeah it could well do we I, I think for that role it's specifically working with the finance and assets working group mm -hmm. and we're looking for someone who has some element of legal expertise yes yes i might not endorse all of that yeah it, it's a. Um, it's fair to say it, it's a tricky role because it requires someone who has legal expertise, property mm. expertise, mm. maintenance expertise. Mm. Um, so whether such a person is it, <laughs> but I think we do have expertise within the council in terms of legal right. aspects. So if there is someone who has some elements of that job description but not others, I think there are people, right, yeah, balance. there are people here who can balance that out and help with. Uh, Forward. But it, it's. Um, I think we need to really pay, pay very close attention to the job description, to the recruitment process, yes, and to try and make sure that we find someone who can hit as many buttons as possible. Okay. Can I ask the same question? Um, Councillor Tuka mentioned that you there's been a, a problem getting hold of uh, lease, and that you know you, you made a lot of progress, but there's still major ones outstanding. Yes. Are they for major assets? I don't necessarily need to go into the detail, no. but are they, or are they mainly for minor assets? So that's a really good question because um, good question. It's, it's a nice segue to um, one activity that we agreed at the last working group meeting, mm -hmm. which was for myself to meet with Councillor Green to agree the priority assets. Right. Um, so I'd be sort of preempting that discussion. However, um, there are gaps, I think, even across some of the significant assets. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, there's no, it's not a case of the ones that are less important, therefore we disregard it. It's not that. Yeah. Um, a couple of additional um, bits of information on that. We're meeting with the leaseholder of the cinema mm -hmm. on Wednesday this week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that will open some. Um, discussions about the future of mm. that building and we're also arranging a visit to Boatman's Hill Chapel yes. mm. just to see what the, the building is like whether it's letable or or not yeah. mm. <laughs> okay. sorry just to interrupt Simon the, um, the volume isn't working on YouTube so there's no sound oh. sorry to get to any better that's on Let's see I'll carry on while we have a couple of technical um, Any other comments on the Finance and Asset Working Group update? Are you happy to, are you asking for us just to, just note, to, note, to note the report? Yeah. I propose we note the report. Do we have a second there? Yes. All those in favour? So that report is noted. Um, thanks to that uh, group for all the work they're doing. Um, item six is update on the priorities for the Finance and General Purposes Committee. Members to receive an update on the priorities with recommended actions for the committee. Members to review the priorities and consider progress. And this is attachment three. So, shall we go through this? Okay. 
fighting by out too many issues to raise here. So the staff structure is we're almost there. It's yes, still yeah. the assets officer we've talked about. Yeah. Um, I think one of the issues for the future is we, we need to look at the number of meetings being held so that we can try and get the minutes in sync with the uh, agendas so that we're not looking at the minutes of the meeting before the last meeting, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but the report will be coming to a future meeting yeah. with the schedule for next year. Mm -hmm. uh, financial system is on the agenda, software. Uh, could I ask Karen, have you had any ideas about presentation of accounts from councils? No, I was hoping that councils would come up with, you know, uh, ideas, but I think it also is going to be informed by the new finance yes. system, so yeah. it's going to be very much um, a template that they use, um, but there will be scope for, um, you know, slight changes. So would it be useful if, if for example, we looked at you know, um, Warmington on Sea Parish Council accounts and said they're really good and sent you a, a link? Um, that, would, that would be helpful or not? It will be, but I think also if you were, if you want to get onto that item, if you had already looked at the types of reports that these companies do produce, yeah. um, it's not going to be a million miles away from, from that. So, um, yeah. Um, they may be able to be bespoke reports, but I'd have to ask them. Yeah, um, this may be a very stupid question, and I haven't looked at those reports that these companies have produced, but I would like the budget presented so the, the accounts presented so that I can see how the expenditure relates to the budget that's been put aside. So. If we put aside, if we budgeted five thousand for an item, I would like to see that figure beside the expenditure figure. It's yeah, it's already, already in. Oh, is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, there's, yeah there's, two reports, there's two reports that you see every month. The oh, first right. one is income okay. expenditure, and the second one is expenditure um, against budget oh, okay. variance. Oh, right. So yeah, that would be the second report. Oh, okay. I'd be more interested in I'd be more interested in the, the variance column, yeah. so we can highlight in red perhaps you know ten or twenty percent higher or lower. Yeah, I think if we my, my my personal view is to do deal with this sequentially. So we've got three software packages we're going to be talking about. We will be selecting one of those, I assume. I think then there's a bit of homework for everybody to then do some investigation around the chosen package. Yeah. Um, and therefore we've got something tangible to look at yeah. uh, and with suggestion other councils etc yeah. uh, we can do that then come to you with informed yeah. rather than maybe random reports that can't be delivered from the package mm -hmm. yeah. yeah we'll come on to that later yeah. anyway yeah. um payroll we've talked about sorry standing orders yeah. uh sorry just going back um the website is on course for the end of this month Yes, it is. Yeah. 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 Can I just ask, is that going to be a, a full website or are things going to be added um, as and when you get time? Well, I'm, as much as I, content as I can, because obviously mm -hmm. yeah. when we're launching this, we want it to be credible and we want <coughs> it to be you know, well received. Yeah. So as much content as I can, and I'm working this week on that. That is my priority. Yeah. Good. But what I would say, it can't be the end product. And I think we are all... Uh, accountable for the quality of the, of the mm. website, so it's not there, uh, in my opinion, that we say that doesn't meet what we want. I think far better if we all take some time to look at it and say, actually, well, this is how it could be improved. Okay. So the next few items there are the working group, which we covered, uh, new standing orders in terms of reference, we're coming to the next cycle, is that correct? Um, yes, so after May with the new Council's mm -hmm. formed after the new council year. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, payroll we've covered, health and safety. Anything else on this list? What do you say on this list and into the end? 
for the end, yeah. We have other one coming. Sequence. Okay. So one specific comment on the deep dive of finance part here. Yeah, I'd like that to be better represented because um, at the moment it's not really suggesting any time frame for that. So we need to tie it into our financial year or else we could have two uh, deep dives within the same month. Yeah. That's obviously what we're yeah. not going to do. Um, so we need to agree what the two points are for that. Yeah. And therefore that focuses us on actually making sure we do it. Because mm -hmm. my worry is we won't do it. Um, and then the second thing, a broader comment. Um, I think this really illustrates how much progress we have made in the last eight months that we've been yeah. um, administering this council. And so I'd like to say to the officers, thank you very much, but also I think as a group, we've, we've achieved, there's a lot more to do, yeah. but I think we've made some good progress. That, that, that's a good point. We're only eight, nine months in yeah. for, a, for a four year prison script. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the deep dive, it probably makes sense for that to be what a, a budget stage and an outturn stage. Um, just on things like government government preference and everything else, we did have a meeting with the finance officer and the town clerk, um, and we are now proposing of the um, the people who were in the former um, standing orders group is to bring a paper to the town council in March about um, how we look at these and update them as required and so on. Yeah. Okay. Just on the deep dive, I agree with you. 50%, I think out term definitely, but I would prefer that we did one halfway through the financial year because that then gives us the opportunity to make any uh, adjustments within sufficient time available um, because if not, um, we won't be able to influence our, our um, path of movement and that's really important I think. So October, November. Yeah. Maybe even slightly earlier, but yeah. 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 Good. Anything else on this list? No? So this will be a rolling report of GTA. Yes. So the next item is item seven, proposed financial software for procurement. Committee to receive a report from the RFO with three identified finance software quotations. The inclusion of a booking software option is recommended assist with streamlining the processes for hirers and officers. Members are asked to consider the report and recommend that STC approve the procurement of a suitable finance software package. And this is obviously something that's been in our pending trade for some time, very important. Yes. So shall we ask Karen to introduce it, if you're happy to? Um, yes, I suppose so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've written the report to give you um, the reason why we're doing this, um, being that we're still using Excel spreadsheets, they're very slow, it's time consuming, it's not as robust as using a proper system. Um, looking at the systems available, there are only three notable systems that are used by parishes and town councils. Um, Realtors own the finance or out of finance if you're a smaller town. Um, Advantage Finance and Scribe Finance. Um, there are other systems around, obviously. There are things like Sage, um, mm -hmm. QuickBooks, other systems like that, but they are not recommended by National Association of Urban Councils or, or the Kent Association as being appropriate and useful for town councils and parish councils. These particular systems are um, very helpful in um, providing the, the, the sort of framework that we have been and working towards the end of the year documents that we need to produce. Um, and they don't have, um, some of them don't have all the bells and whistles that you don't need when you're not producing full accounts. Um, Realtas does because um, 
it's generally used by large councils, um, and some of those large councils do need to provide profit and loss accounting. Um, if we went on the AFS, we would have the advantage of a larger system, more scope, a system that's been um, more um, developed, I suppose, than the other two. Um, the reporting is supposed to be more robust, um, and it's, the system itself is more complex, hence the fact that there is three days training as opposed to three hours to advantage or just web online training prescribed. Um, the, um, the handout form that I brought with me tonight, it shows that all the things in grey um, are council-specific requirements are met by all three systems. Um, the difference being the size of, of the system and how complex they are, really. Um, Scribe is commonly used by parishes and small towns. It's the most user-friendly option, um, and it does meet all the criteria, but I would question whether it's a good enough system for us, seeing um, as we also have a charity that we have to run alongside the town council account, so in effect the, um, the accounts are double in size, um, just across two organisations. Um, Advantage and Realtors are fairly similar in how they appear. Um, a little bit old fashioned, um, they've managed to get them cloud, cloud hosted, they're not fully cloud based, um, but they appear as if they were cloud um, based, um, i.e. you log in um, on the website and you follow a link and it appears and then the page appears like a website page um, and you can do that remotely. So um, there's no problem with people working at home or, yeah. or so on. Um, the bigger systems have more options. Um, Realty being the biggest, it has um, already has phased budgeting, which is a good option. I actually use already in my um, cash flow spreadsheet. Using it in Excel is very slow. Um, but they have the phased budgeting, which means um, some budgets, um, for example, insurance might get all paid out in one month. Other budgets are paid over 12 months. Some might be paid quarterly, that sort of thing. So it enables you to manage your um, spending against the expected time that in the year that it will be spent. Um, Realtors, as I mentioned, uh, produce, uh, that does produce poor profit and loss accounting, which would be very helpful for the charity. We don't need that for the town council, but I think the auditors for the charity would be very interested in that. Um, all three report, um, some of which can be um, downloaded into Excel um, for extra sort of manipulation. Some of the reports I know because I asked the question um, from Advantage do not download into Excel. Um, looking at all, all three, they've all got um, things that are good about them, they've all got things that aren't so good. None of them are perfect. It's, it's mainly about the size of system um, and how much scope they've got, to, how much room for growth. Um, I've also put in information about facility booking. Mm -hmm. They all provide facility mm -hmm. booking. Um, at the moment, the facility booking and the room hire invoicing is really slow. It's, it's sort of... Um, it needs you to look at various different spreadsheets. Um, nothing talks to everything. Um, 
finance system doesn't talk to the booking system. We're using um, Microsoft Outlook, um, which is fine, but it doesn't speak to anything else. Mm. Um, this would provide, any of these would provide um, a booking system that would speak to the finance system and then automatically upload into sales ledger and produce an invoice and email the invoice out. So there's a lot of um, time saving advantage of using both systems working together. Um, both the Rebe Rebecca and the Advantage facility systems are quite uh, similar, but the Scribe one, um, it has web advantages, i.e. you can have customers booking remotely via the website. Um, this is great, but we are not sure that the deal tool is a suitable venue for that sort of customer booking. If we were running a very um, simple deal tool or penny store, yeah. I think that would be okay. But this is quite a complex building and I don't think we need that facility. I think it would just make things very complicated. I've given you a cost breakdown um, so you can see what the differences are. Um, but by the amount of paperwork that you get from the real test booking system, you can see how much bigger a system they are, how much more they do. Um, and that's probably why, or partly why they charge more. Can I start off with some yeah, questions? Um, so there's quite, first of all, your summary. Um, you're, not, you're not pointing us towards a provider, but you're saying that uh, Realtas are your, are your preferred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, so they, they all have advantages, they all have disadvantages, yeah, yeah. but Realtas is the, Largest so when you say it's the most robust system with the best reporting, have you actually looked at uh, how it looks and played I, with it on, online? Yeah, I haven't had any um, opportunity to play okay. with it. I've had um, a couple of introductions on sort of Zoom teams whereby they show me how things are done. And obviously, they've given me all these different reports to look at. Um, I can tell that it's a much more complex system, and therefore, they will have um, more complex reporting, much more. More tweaking and. Yeah. Um, drilling down into figures and so on. Yes. So, when you say advantage is not so robust, you mean it's not, it wouldn't do as much as. The real test system? I think from what I've found out, there are a few, there can be a few glitches with reporting, there can be um, a few issues um, with how the system works, and whether, you know, whether it um, has IT issues, whether you, okay. you have IT issues. Um, I have heard that there might be issues with advantage. But um, they're similarly, then maybe we out us. We, mm -hmm. we don't know until yeah, we start yeah. using it, and it's just guesswork, really. Because they all they do is they give you, say, half an hour, um, talking you through the system, and showing you what you can do with it. That's all you get until you buy it. <laughs> because if you look over a ten-year period, we're talking about the Altas being more than double. The cost, um, so it is a big decision for us to be making. Um, yeah, okay. I think Councillor Zuka was first. So um, I think this is really helpful and important that we have sort of a requirements based analysis. Um, what the question I have around is the inter interoperability between running a council, set of accounts, and a charity. Have you looked at whether 
uh, either of, or any or all of these systems enables you to do that complex um, uh, crossover of information? Definitely reality and advantage can do that. Yeah. And you log in, there, there's a setting um, whereby you log into an organisation you require. So oh, okay. um, it's the same login and then you have a drop down menu, yeah. you go into Sandwich Town Council or you go into Sandwich Covid Town. Okay. Um, and so, yes. they would look the same. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, and they both work in that way, okay. visually. Visually, so yeah. it's just whether there's any actual technical crossover you need um, uh, between the two or whether you need to keep them separate. But what I would like to see is um, some examples of the accounts that need to produce. Now that I can see this in front of me, this is really helpful um, for me. Um, and we'll come to a vote in a second. I'd be ruling out Scribe now because of the functionality doesn't need this uh, sufficiently in terms of what we want. But then back to Colin's point about cost, I find it very difficult to agree to something that's double. Uh, that like if the middle line delivers the solution, yeah. So that's where I'm at the moment. But it'd be good to see some examples of the accounts that we produce. Well, the examples I've given you are the only ones I've oh, got. Okay. I'm afraid. It's just where there's any councils that um, because I've just looked on their website and there's no reference to specific. So they, um, right. so well, these documents oh, were provided yeah. um, to you and they're yeah. on the website. Oh. Um, these, these are what I have requested. Yeah. I've specifically requested um, things that might um, be helpful to us, yeah. um, but they're, they're not by any means exhaustive list yeah. of what they can provide. Yeah. Um, okay. And, and obviously, we can't. We can't see our own account in no, this format until we actually write and start using it. And the final thing is we are moving from a very low base of a very um, uh, awkward process. Whatever we go with, of any of the three, will improve things significantly. It's just cost is important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another stupid question. Or perhaps it's a very stupid question. But what Seeking to grow. Bear in mind all the 
discussion we've had about um, the markets and events and um, how much we really want to grow that. And I'm wondering if that's a bit of a critical failure in Realtas, because it seems to cover almost every other base and, and accept that. Um, and how important that is compared to um, not having a PL for a uh, charity. And that, that's sort of a technical question. And the second point I've got is of the councils that we've got, say, in East Kent, do you know if which ones, which of the larger ones, I suppose we're talking of nothing but smaller than Deal, for example, um, uses which? Because if we're saying that we are, and we definitely are, more complicated than standard parish, no question about that. Are we more complicated than Dover or Deal or uh, Ashford? I'm, I'm not convinced that we are, or uh, uh, any of the councils in town. Are you aware of any of them using either of these softwares? Um, I am aware that Ramscape uses Charity brings more complexity um, to our account, and also we have a large portfolio of properties, um, which brings more complexity to the accounts. Um, having a good assets um, register or assets manager module might be also helpful to us. Um, so, advantage. Regarding the PNL, um, we don't currently produce the PNL. It's the um, auditor's accountant's job to do that on behalf of the charity. Mm -hmm. So it's not a, a change, you know, that we absolutely need mm -hmm. to provide. It would be helpful for the auditor. It might speed their job up. They might find it better. I was going to ask you how much less. Um, <laughs> yeah, I. I I haven't got a quote. I don't, no, I, I, I don't I was think just, it would actually take us into that. No, it, 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 it wouldn't. But it, it strikes me that that's one of the critical balances is the market versus the, the PNL. Mm. Having not seen the market module in action, and I don't really know what our requirements are for that, I haven't really. I put that in as a, an aside. It's not something that I'm looking at um, as being important um, for me. Moment in time, so I, I don't know. <laughs> Do you know if anyone uses the um, you, you said that um, Ramscape uses Advantage? Uh, yes, Ramscape uses Advantage, don't work years with Realtas. Um, I know Westgate used to use Realtas Alpha, uh, which is a small version, um, but having contacted Realtas and giving them the size of our precept. They say that we would need to use the larger system. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure about deal actually, but I, I think that you know they probably have a larger precept. Um, but that's and complexity. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the system they're using at the moment. Okay. Yeah, no. Oh, just briefly, um, both the artists and advantage mm -hmm. say that. Uh, we can switch pretty seamlessly, I expect, between STC and STPA. Yes. In the event that uh, another is added, such as Maddox Trust, I presume that yes. we can just... Yes, add yeah. another organisation, yeah. 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 I'm not sure what they, uh, how many organisations you can add, but I don't think three would be a problem. Yeah. 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 As I understand it, um, we're being asked to purchase this programme. Um, and um, but I'm presuming it gets upgraded, yeah. does it? Yeah. That's built into it. Yeah. So how over how many years do we think this this software, whichever one we purchase, will last for? Will will do the job that we want it to do? I'm hoping that. Um, it would have a good 10 years in it. Right. Um, and I'm hoping also that these systems will um, 
improves the continuity in all the ways and also become more fully self-based because being um, more we're posted, posted so. fully cloud-based. Right. <coughs> being we're, we're posted is not that being fully cloud-based, it's still relying on a server so, to yeah. host. Um, and I'm sure these systems are trying to get there, but um, they haven't got there yet. So that would be um, my hope is that they're, they're working towards that and also working on their um, how the system actually looks because it is a little old fashioned. Unfortunately, we don't have any three systems available. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would continue to be used as long as we wanted to use it. Yeah. And for as long as the company was a going concern, if the yes. company yeah. went bust, then yeah. Yeah. we're you know, in, in, in trouble. Well, are we in trouble if they were not in trouble? Uh, well, unless they're taken over by another company, or I don't know. But it's a one off purchase, so mm -hmm. we're not paying the rent. Yeah. We're paying an yes. annual fee. Yeah, an annual yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, so it's yeah. similar to the website in that yeah. you procure it and then you then pay the ongoing yeah. rental, if you want to call it rental, which is the facility is available to us on a yearly fee yeah. basis. And how much is that going to be? Oh, well, it's the year two ongoing process. Oh, okay. So Sorry. the site yeah. 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 Do we Do we know roughly how many councils each of the... Uh, I looked online at both of these companies. I think they work not just for councils but for other companies, yeah. and so presumably they're both, you know, viable, financially stable companies. I can't comment on that. No. I know that they've been going a long time. I've yeah. been working for councils for ten years, and yeah. they've all been yeah. going for ten years. So they're, they're I know that the ATS has changed um, its governance mm -hmm. recently. Um, could I ask a couple more questions? Yeah. So you, you say in your introduction, rail test and advantage are rather old-fashioned. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? I mean visually, visually. Um, Scribe is, um, it looks more like a modern. Any sort of sage, that sort of uh, visual appearance. Um, but it, it works better for smaller numbers. In your comparison sheet, you you talked about profit and loss. I presume yeah. that's income and expenditure account. So the, the, the auditor prepares that based on the figures you supply. You don't provide that. Yeah, the, the, the full profit and loss account um, are what you see for the charity. Um, the charity commission um, have our copies of our full profit and loss accounts for the charity. Okay. Um, but for the town council, it's just the annual governance um, report. I don't think they call it profit and loss accounts, are they? No, not for the town council. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, the thing about Excel, exporting to Excel, which um, Advantage doesn't do fully, you say some. Is that a dis how big a disadvantage is that? I don't know. <laughs> Um, until I'm working with it, okay. I don't know which reports would work and which wouldn't. Um, and that's, it was a slight worry. And why would if you the reports, If the reports work in their own right, yeah. then there would be no need for me to, to fiddle around with them in Excel. Why would you need to export to Excel? Well, if anyone wants me to um, take figures and mm, then expand on it yeah. and work it into a, a new report, then okay. I might. I might need to do that if, for example, this sort of report and it's got financial information yeah. in it, it, I could get that from, download that from the system and put it in a Word document. Okay. But you would hope that the packages would do that? I know that they do yeah. to a certain extent, yeah. 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 And then the final one about the advantage do the markets and events, mm -hmm. but real tests don't. It seems to me that's a fairly major disadvantage is it is it not i just looked at the um advantage offer around markets and events and it's quite detailed in terms of what they provide mm. and it may be more than we would want so for example it gives a market manager the ability to have um, uh, an ipad device and be walking around and being able to do stuff. taking payment 
it also gives uh, market stallholders the opportunity to make payments themselves yeah. into that particular module, etc. They, they may be things that it looks great, but they may be things that we might not necessarily want to use mm. for our purposes. Okay. Uh, any other comments? I think um, this is a big decision. I think mm. so. I, I'm wondering, Karen to what extent the decision needs to be made now, or whether it would give you comfort. Because if, if this decision make, is made purely on your recommendation, and it goes pear shape, then, then uh, it could, could put you in a difficult position. I'm not suggesting it will, but would it give you more comfort if we were to say, let's look at it in a bit more depth, yeah. and bring it back to next, or do we need to make the decision now? Because, um, we need the decision made by the beginning of March yeah. Yeah. in order for one of these companies to pair our data okay. for the first of April to go live. Okay. Um, if we if we hang on another month, yeah. it will be too late. Okay. <laughs> so, 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 so do we have a proposal? You're, oh no, just briefly, I think it's pertinent. For example, we went for advantage on a cost basis. Mm -hmm. Two years time, we realise it's not quite it. And, we, and we've done more research and the analysis is the ideal. I would imagine one can migrate to that. Absolutely, yeah. 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 So. And, and, and how would it work now? Well, everything would migrate from Excel into these new packages? Yeah, what I would do is give them our um, new budgets for the new financial year, yeah. um, and they would get them onto their system um, ready for April 1st. Um, and any other information they need to come up, like suppliers, information, that sort of thing. Okay. So I think we've established that they're broadly comparable. But do we have a proposal? Yes, my, my proposal would be that we rule out Scribe. Yeah. We focus on the two to take them to STC. In the period between now and then, you have maybe Gavin Bay or maybe it's had a detailed conversation with Landscape. Uh, council in terms of how comfortable they're with it mm -hmm. if you're able to then come to the with or feed into the SPC um, that response that'd be really helpful mm -hmm. and I think it's incumbent on us to take a little bit of time to look at the two that are left on the table if we sign up to that yeah. in terms of their products yeah um, I'm agreeing with everything that Councillor Tuber has said but I do think it could be extremely useful to find a reasonably local council that uses Realtus um, and ask them as many difficult questions as you will be asking um, Ramsgate about um, advantage. Because the, the whole thing, the user experience is very different from what salespeople tell you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They've been there so often. Mm -hmm. um, if you could find someone, I, I'm sorry if it adds a few workloads, but I do think. It's just a pretty <coughs> critical decision. And I think the other thing we're happy to agree with is that we buy the facilities um, booking yes, system for whichever yes. provider is mm -hmm. chosen. So do we have a proposal for which one we take forward? I, my proposal we, we take forward both realities and advantage to be decided by us. So, so we're not we're, we're deciding between those two, but not so we're making a recommendation to STC and told which fund. If I had to make a recommendation this minute, it would definitely be to advantage, but I'd yeah. like a little bit more time just yeah. to yeah. reflect. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think on cost, yeah. on cost, yeah. So is that, are you happy with that, Karen? If we would all do a yes. bit more? I mean, I, I can speak to users and get some views, yeah. um, and I can bring those views yeah. along. And you'll bring a revised version of this report to for yes. yeah. so Just one so thing. Clear recommendation. Well, with, with regard to speaking to users, um, it's not necessarily what it will do, but how fast. Um, because, I mean, I, I'm actually in this business. I generate software. And um, one of the things I'm constantly doing is asking the user if it's fast enough. Mm -hmm. uh, because you can get, you press the button, and you wait, mm -hmm. or you press the button, it's there, mm -hmm. and that can be a make or break. But I, I think the other thing that we can do as 
as councillors in the next week is to just do, do our own research on these yeah. two systems, who uses them, um, you know, user reviews, all that kind of thing, yeah. and feed that into Karen okay. so that we can hopefully come to a consensus that we're mainly meeting. Is that okay? Yes. Good. Okay, so that's a proposal from Councillor Sinclair. So the proposal is that we um, uh, pass this to STC for a full deci uh, final decision mm -hmm. between yeah. Advantage and Riotas, mm -hmm. and that we, whichever is chosen, also we purchase the facilities booking uh, system at the same time. Yeah. Carol will do some research, we will do some research, and Carol, Karen will present a final report to STC with a clear recommendation based on the work that's done between them now and then. So I propose that, or Councillor Zuka proposes that. Okay. I'll yes, second that. Okay. All those in favour? I'm sort of, I, I still have a slight worry. If Karen comes to us with a clear recommendation for a particular company, um, I don't know how far you will take into account value for money, because that's obviously our responsibility. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, I can see you'll be tempted to go for the Rolls Royce, and we may say, but the Ford Prefect will do. Yeah. Um, uh, because, and we can afford the Ford Prefect, and the Rolls Royce is actually pushing the budget really quite considerably. So I'm not, I, I just wanted to make that point. Yeah. That's, that's the worry. It's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Just maybe to counter that, Claire, is that the report to STC doesn't need to give your personal recommendation. It can be what we've got here is, an, is further detailed analysis of the two options mm -hmm. that we're happy to support at the moment mm -hmm. uh, without you necessarily saying you must go with this one. So yeah. that would be my preference in yeah. picking up your point. It's got to be the council's decision. Yeah. I, think, I think this report can go. It's just the summary, yeah. the kind of pros and cons of each it perhaps yeah. needs to be expanded upon. So that you lead members towards a decision. So that's the proposal. Are we happy to vote on that again? All in favour? Yes. Yes. Agreed. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Karen, for mm. doing that work as well. Right, next item is Bulwark's play area and STC contribution, attachment five. Town clerk to share a report with members that outlines the recommendation, recommended contribution to the EEC in relation to the play area projects and to propose a collaborative strategy for future projects um, with recommendations to full council. And this follows on from the discussion we had at the previous meeting when um, DDC came to talk to us. Karen, uh, sorry, Jill, would you want to? Okay, yes, because. Thank you, Chair. Um, so yes, this follows on from the pre-meeting that we had um, last month before the STC meeting, and it does concern the Bullwarts play area and draft SLAs um, for two play areas with Dover District Council. So um, I'm requesting the committee consider a request from Dover District Town Council to contribute to the partial refurbishment of the Bullwarts play area, to consider the terms of the SLA for Polders Gardens and Bullwarts play areas, and this was actually um, previously agreed in 2017, and you do have the broad terms um, that I am told by Dover District Council officers are not likely to change, but of course the fees will need to be negotiated. Mm -hmm. So Dover District Council holds the £15,000 as we um, discussed earlier, which is as a contribution towards improvements to the Bullwarts play area, and this was a compensation payment from Southern Water. Dover District Council officers have also requested £30,000 from Dover District Council's medium term financial plan, and this is going to be considered as part of the DDC full council meeting on the 6th of March as part of their budget setting process. If that request is successful and approved, this would then secure a budget of £45,000, which is hoped to be enough to replace the wooden multi play unit and art bridge with a new multi play feature. Also, potentially dependent on budget some minor improvements such as the refurbishment of the swings and adding some small ancillary equipment pieces where budget permits. 
There is an opportunity for the Town Council to make a financial contribution and to request that particular items of equipment are replaced or undertake a more comprehensive renovation. Any proposals will be subject to review with all stakeholders once the budget is secured. And if the Town Council were to contribute, the Town Council could nominate one Town Councillor to be part of the process and to speak for Sandwich Town Council and to be involved throughout development and delivery of the project. Uh, the Town Council has funds in the budget for this year, which amounts to £6,600, for a potential contribution to local district council for a potential service fee for any agreed service level agreement. And the budget amount of 6700 is incorporated in next year's budget for, again, a potential service fee for an SLA. This would give a combined amount of £13,300. In summary, any STC contribution would help to broaden the project options and deliver more than a partial refurbishment. Financially, it is always better to deliver a project as a whole rather than over a few years, given the rising costs of labour and materials and the potential duplication of site setup costs each year. The second part of this report relates to the service level agreement that lapsed in 2019-2020 and the original SLA was dated the 1st of August 2017 and you'll see attached as Appendix 1. The committee asked us to consider if they support negotiations commencing with Dover District Council to renew the SLA that relates to Polders Gardens and the Bullworth play areas and if that is their recommendation to Council. The initial indications from Dover District are that the broad terms are proposed to remain the same and there do, does need to be some negotiations around the service fee if STC are content to continue with the partnership agreement. So could you just clarify, the, the service level agreement has lapsed, so we're not yes. paying anything? That's correct. That. Yes. But that's a revenue, an annual revenue payment? Yes. So, yes. And you're going to treat it as a capital? So um, I've been very, I have been um, for a number of, um, last couple of months saying that we need to be actively involved in this project, I, I did put my name forward before. It's really um, crystallised by Canterbury City have just um, opened a new play park in the Dane John, uh, 100,000 investment. It's had massive criticism in terms of its um, um, usability. There's been rain recently and it is a mud bath. Um, I've seen photos, Facebook, the best place to go to to look for photos. Um, so we need to get it right. Uh, and by being directly involved is important rather than having it done to us. So um, it's important to do that. Um, also, the... Um, the way in which we, the finances, I've talked to Jill about this previously, and you know this this opportunity here in terms of the two revenue streams we identified for this year and next year, and crystallising that into a capital investment, I think is a, a way forward. Um, but I think the risks around it two, are twofold. One, thirteen thousand three hundred. Are we going to invest that over two years? Because if we don't, then that has a financial impact on twenty four twenty five. Also, uh, if we, and, and I support renewing the SLA in terms of contribution, because the SLA exists, because they're doing the work, um, but paying a contribution, my argument would be we start paying a contribution from 26-7, because if we don't, we'll have another financial impact, either for two years or for one year, if we were able to defer it for one year. So I think we have to be very careful about the financial impacts of the decisions we do, but we're starting from the point where Sandwich Town Council for a couple of years, three years, have not made a financial contribution. So if we if we give a cast iron guarantee we're going to start doing it, we might have to ask for some wiggle room about when we start doing it. Um, so that's my observations at the moment on that. So if we contribute this money, fifty eight thousand roughly. Thirty, forty-five, fifty-eight. And for that, we get in a new castle thing, structure, a bridge, yeah. and something else. Repaint, yes. repaint. 
and screens. But yeah. 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 Yes, and some ancillary, I've been told some ancillary, but... It doesn't seem that like crazy, no. that's, that's well, my thought. It, well, people think. Yeah. They, are they, are very, they are very expensive, yes. Yes. there's a facility. Very. Well, here comes another naive question, because I really don't understand this. So, um, if we uh, invest 13,300 pounds um, to complement the 45,000 that we're expecting from some water and DDC to come, who or how, how is the service level agreement financed then? And who is doing the work? The essential work, you know, of, of maintaining um, the play areas in this town. If we are not paying for it, I don't understand. So the work is still happening. So the Lower District Council yeah. is still undertaking the work. It's just that we are not currently making a financial contribution because yeah. we, we don't have the SLA in place. So we were making a financial contribution, but we yeah. haven't been for a little while now because the SLA lapsed. And we don't have a. We don't own them anything. We're not in debt. How is that possible? Well, obviously um, the, S the SLA lapsed, so that's why we haven't been invoiced. So um, that's, that's basically yeah. that. But they're still doing the work. They are. Yes. Well, they, have, they, have, they, yes. have, they have a, a legal requirement. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. And, and within the SLA, it's quite detailed in terms of what should be provided, yes. and, and it does say DDC provided. But it also then goes on to say, should any of the equipment fail, and need to be replaced, they will not pay for it. So we have to play our role in this by yes. investing because actually the longevity of the play park is important. Because if not, it will just start, bits will be cordoned off over time. Yeah. So, okay. so, so can I just ask a supplementary then? So, okay, so we add in 13,300 as a capital investment in new equipment. So then, if we wish to pay DDC as part of a, an SLA, where do we get that money from? So I think that's where Councillor Suka was picking up here, that we could negotiate that we actually don't pay anything until the next budget year, so that we can then incorporate any fee in the, because obviously we've clearly set the budget for this year. Yeah. Um, so that means that this would be a, a capital investment that would be, as Councillor Suka said, be showing that town council is you know, um, supporting and working in partnership with Dover District to invest in the play area and then the negotiation stage could be that you know the SLA will be um, renegotiated with um, the caveat that the uh, fee is paid from next financial year. Yes and now I'm going to ask the typical civil service question. So if it's happening anyway why do we have to pay for it? It just really shows that we are seriously investing in our play area because as Councillor Super said, if we don't keep making contributions and keep supporting the play area, it's likely that the equipment will eventually fail. No, I'm not talking and about the equipment, I'm talking about the SLA. But that's all tied in with it. It's, it's basically saying that all the inspections and everything, this is only a contribution that the council will be making. It, but, it, but it means that if, if the council is making a contribution, Though the district council then can use other funds to, to you know keep the maintenance more improved. It's, it's, it's keeping everything sweet. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and also, um, Jill in the fight. Uh, sorry, Karen. In terms of financial budget for next year, recognise we actually have a standing commitment to pay towards the SLA, and yeah. we have agreed an amount already. Um, but we're looking at using that as a capital investment yeah. instead. Yeah. What we're doing again, Claire, as you would appreciate, is we're addressing an absence of proper administration before we arrive. Yeah. So the SLA, the SLA will be renegotiated and will kick in from twenty five six. That's my suggestion, but obviously that's for council to decide. But they won't. They won't. They won't update it. <laughs> I, I think if there was a capital um, investment offered, I do think that that would be, you know, greatly received, and, and obviously that helps negotiation as well. I would say. Yeah. I mean, these 
was made clear that the, this and the Folgers Gardens are not strategic play areas. Yes. And therefore they could just close them down if they yeah. wanted to. They could. So we're, you know, they're obviously very important sites for mm -hmm. kids and families in the town. So, yeah. yeah. Well, Mr. Stoss, the SOA um, that doesn't it, it exist, but we continue with SOA for all three play parks in the future? No. Two. Just for two. two. The, the, the bus one is a strategic one. It's yeah. a strategic one. So they do it. But yeah. do we not have to pay a contribution no. for the maintenance no, of that? No. Okay, I knew it was the strategic. I didn't think up that they will pick up the full maintenance cost. Yeah. So we need to budget for both because obviously. Told us one that's um, a little bit scant, should be said. <laughs> like there's a couple of springs, one roundabouts, and um, that's about it. But it's it, it kept in very good condition. Yeah. Because I went down, down there last week and it is um, quite good. So I would like to, if there's no other comments. Mm, just one, just yeah. one comment, sorry. Yeah. Um, the, the material is being taken away, so the, the units are removed from the ground. Uh, they're not end of life. Can they be moved to folders? I think that you'll probably find once they're moved, they probably won't be. Um, right. Yeah, health yeah. and safety. It, once something's been moved, it's usually it fails. It's not yeah. something that can be because the, the mm -hmm. process you go to to actually yeah. with, with remove it would. would Tend to yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking mostly of the, the arch because I mean that's just solid, solid steel. Mm -hmm. yeah. We certainly be worth exploring. Yes. We, we may well have the answer already that once you yes. disassemble something, I, I it can be assembled. That would be great. Thank you. Okay, so we have a fairly long winded. Um, Detailed. <laughs> Detailed. But, uh, can we summarise that <laughs> and to say uh, we propose that we recommend to council a financial contribution of 13,300 be made offered to DDC for the Bulwark's play area. Are we doing that over two years? That's the key question for me. Are we able to do that over two years? Because if not, we're having to pump another 6,000 odd pieces coming into financial year. Yeah. Um, this financial year we have 6,600 yeah. in the budget oh. that we haven't we spent. Have spent. Ah, and yes. Right, that's yes. brilliant. Oh, yes. oh, sorry, I'm yes. 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 the one we're in. Yeah. 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 The money is there. there. So that's good. That's, that's where yeah. my uh, stress has gone. <laughs> so, we, we re my proposal is we recommend to council that we make a contribution of 13,300, yeah. offer, offer a contribution to DDC for partial refurbishment of the Bulwark's play area and that we also recommend that uh, we talk to DDC about renewing the SLA for Polders Gardens and the Bulwark's play area. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes sense. Do we have a second? All those in favour? Uh, number nine is the weekend market inquiry, mm -hmm. attachment six. Town clerk to share a report that relates to a three day market event inquiry for the um, 22nd to the 24th of March 24, and a potential food fair in May proposed to be held on Guildhall Forecourt Square. Members are asked to consider the request and progress to recommend to council of support of decision required. Attachment six. Yes, thank you. Um, so yes, yeah, so um, I've been approached by a company um, that they their marketing brand is in events. They're actually called Market Square Group. Um, they asked me if we would consider host, them hosting a three-day market event, um, which is the twenty-second to the twenty-fourth of March. Um, this is a potential inquiry um, for us, for the same company as well to do a food fair in May twenty twenty-four, but dates have not been discussed. And again, this would be held on the Guildhall Four Court Square. Um, they've approached us and inquired about hosting events. They are a commercial company and therefore the higher rate fees would apply for any event they deliver on the site. Um, I've provided you with a brief overview of who they are, mm -hmm. um, so hopefully you have an opportunity to go online and look at that. Mm -hmm. 
Um, for the March event, they were proposed to bring quality craft and grocery trainers with a small selection of hot food trainers. Subject to space, they may look to include a small bar and a couple of children's rides, but those elements are complementary rather than essential. Um, so obviously this would be an income generating um, stream of £900 over the three days, £300 a day. Um, so I wanted to bring that to the committee and ask if you'd support this event booking and um, look at it as an, an opportunity to generate some income. Any thoughts on this? Yes, I have something to say if the council permits to say that. Yeah, council really has um, something to say on the yeah. matter as well. Yeah, I'll say that if I can see Mr. Council as well. Um, Councillors, myself and Councillor Malik bring you some information regarding the item on the agenda about Market Square Group and the possibility of using the Guildhall Forecourt. This is to explain to the new council the dealings that myself and Samstown Council had previously with this company. In 2018, before my time as councillor, former Conservative councillor MJ Holloway uh, approached the Market Square Group to possibly run Thursday markets on our behalf and to run some events in the town. After doing some investigations with the company, I found out that the owner of the company is very anti-authority and Dover District Council has had previous dealings with him, in particular payment issues and not having the relevant licences to run the event such as 10 licences, food safety standards um, certificates. A food fair was set up in 2021 in broad scares by this company without permission from Fannett District Council and was shut down by environmental health. As you know, myself and Councillor Mallet run and assist with some very successful events in Sandwich, and I have done so over 12 years. I now understand what is needed to be legal and a safe event. I have evidence from the local storeholders who have worked with this company before, and they have nothing but bad comments to say about this company and how they charge storeholders anything from 100 to 300 pounds per store per day, and how, manage, how management are extremely abusive and aggressive to storeholders if they question anything to the point where they start trying to destroy the storeholders' reputation. The Sandwich Community Events Association always works with and allows local Kentish traders to take part in the events and fully supports local businesses in the town, and the town council used to support the, town, uh, the town's events. My concern is that the town Sound council were promised in uh, 10% uh, of the storeholders' fees after carefully checking with other event organisers around the districts. Uh, this has found out to be untrue. So then the town clerk, Miss Fiddler at the time, and the current mayor at the time, Council Paul Graham, uh, decided it was not in the best interest to have the company to run the markets and the events in Sandwich. I will respect your decision on whatever you decide, but I feel I should point out these issues regarding this company to help make sure that the council is aware that the previous experiences and decisions. Thank you very much. Comments? Yeah. So I, I've made my, uh, it's, it's helpful to have input of experience, but obviously um, we're going back a number of years. Um, I've looked at the company currently um, but there are some, I suppose, some checks that we can take place beforehand. Um, the town park can perform with the company in terms of um, propriety. They are a su successful company. They have been running for over 15 years. They are running events throughout Kent this year. Turn Bay, Whitstable, Folkestone, um, Rye albeit that's in Sussex, um, and elsewhere around the country. So they are a large company. Um, I refer back to the fact that the forecourt is there to generate income. Um, the key thing is to expand the usage of the forecourt. So I would be supporting as long as we make the right checks beforehand. And one of the things I don't think we'll be doing is asking necessarily for a percentage of market store holders' um, payments. They offered that. Okay. Yeah. But sorry, in terms of what we're doing is it will be a, a, a straight charge and I assume that involves payments before the events take place. Yeah. Um, so that's one aspect, but there are a number of other things that should be checked as well, Jeff. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just wanted to ask Councillor Tuesday a question. Did you look at them on the company's hands? 
Uh, I had a look there, um, but I've only done that before we came here, so I wasn't entirely clear with what I'd established. So I need to double check that. But that's one thing that should be done. The company I found under that name wasn't as long standing as this company, so they may be trained, their company may, they may well be different from their trading name. Can I ask the town clerk, uh, is the company aware of the daily um, booking fee? Yes, yes they do are. They know what yes. the fee is? Yes, they do, yeah. I mean, I looked on, I know nothing about this company, but they've got a huge number of events coming up this year, including Beale, yeah. Eastbourne, Home Bay, Folkestone. Mm -hmm. I mean, these things wouldn't be going ahead if there weren't major problems with this company. I think my view is that, A, it's an income for the council, but also it's not conflicting with a, 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 a currently booked event or any of the volunt voluntary uh, community events. Um, there is an argument where it's going to compete with those events, but I'm assuming they do all their own marketing and publicity. And so it, it's a it's a big mar potential market out there. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's taking money away from the weekend or the food fair or the open hour. If they're doing their own publicity, I'm assuming they know what they're doing. And they've got experience of doing this. Mm -hmm. My inclination is to say that let's suck it and see, you know, see it as a trial. Um, and maybe people in the town would welcome a different type of uh, event. But that's my thought. I don't know. Um, the issue seems to be, allegedly in the past, that they were not very good at following things like hygiene and uh, trading licenses and so on. Um, if it's crystal clear to them that you will enforce these from the very outset and the commissioner is shut them down, obviously you don't say it that way, but they need to understand very clearly that this is something we want to try to do, but we are not going to let standards slip. And I, I know you wouldn't, that's sad to say, but, but we need to make it absolutely crystal clear. The other question is, um, again, Places like Deal and so on seem to be pretty well organised in their market. Is it worth having a quiet word and it's um, letting me to see what their experience is? We, we've got, you know, we, we have a report about bad experiences in the past, we, should, we must not discount that. No. But equally, if they are genuinely reformed, mm -hmm. and that may also be a reason why the two dates don't tally on the um, company's house. And I'm just look, sorry, I was just looking at um, the Deal Food and Drink Festival that they're, they're running. It's the ninth year they've run it. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely intelligence around that festival mm -hmm. that we could easily glean from the Deal um, yeah. Town Council, yeah. I think. I'll come back. I know from the word that they're, they're looking to include a small bar, mm -hmm. but there will be alcohol being sold. Some of the hospitality. Mm -hmm. um, units in the town might say that that's a competition for them but mm -hmm. probably it's complementary if anything because if more people are coming in then yeah. that will overspill into the pubs and the restaurants mm -hmm. in the town but it, it's down to them I mean they wouldn't be looking to book this if they didn't think they could make it pay yeah. for yeah. them um, what they're charging storeholders is of no consequence to us as long as they pay the fee um, so I think, I think my, my inclination is to say let's recommend, do a bit more research in case there are any adverse reviews or issues. Maybe speak to Deal Town Council yeah, yeah. just to see what they re recommend yes. because it must be, being, if it's been held for nine years on their watch then they yeah. must have a yeah. thought about it. Yeah. It's not on their land presumably, is it? Is it? It, it might be DDC, I don't know where that is held, I don't know whether it's in the car park or whether it's actually on the Warmer Green. Steel, steel, uh, um, the, the castle, I think. Yeah, it's very close. Yeah, castle, the castle. Castle. Ah, yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, English heritage. That's been on the go for a while, yeah. Deal Town Council might have a view on it. Yeah. So maybe this report could come to um, 
full council with a, a bit more detail added yeah, about yeah. you know information from other sources. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, oh, sorry. Yeah. oh no, just just to add that um, uh, with, with with the comments that uh, uh, Councillor Marie has made, the uh, the, the aggression. I mean, it's, perhaps it's a too strong a word. Um, where that might go in our direction, that um, it's likely that uh, town, uh, the guild, guild of the staff might receive some of that. That being the case, we must be prepared to support them. Mm -hmm. uh, in that, um, in that there is any concern that we do uh, say no for the next time, uh, yeah. based on yeah. you know, town clerks. Well, exactly. I, I see it as a trial in it. Yes. That if those issues arise, then that, it's. It never happens again. Right. Yeah, exactly. Can I just confirm, it's purely a day event, it's not an evening music event or anything like that. And are there proposed to have any live bands or any music like that? Or is it a straight trading uh, market? So a trading market, but I think there might be an element of music. Um, there usually is. But I can certainly clarify that for the meeting next week. I'm, I'm just concerned, um, I've seen something about some people being concerned about um, Continuing noise levels during, uh, you know, from all the range of yeah. uh, what we've got. They live in the centre of town, of course, that's always a risk. Yeah. Yeah. There's certainly not events that go on late into the evening, they no. usually finish at 7 pm, something like that. They're not they're not long evening events. Well, it's going to be dark by then, isn't it? Yeah. They might finish earlier than that. <laughs> I think they might. So, my proposal is we accept this in principle, subject to further checking on um, any issues, yeah. adverse reviews, maybe contact Guild Town Council, and also checking on the times. Yeah, looking at the uh, well. at the castle, Guild Castle, it's 6 p.m., 5 p.m., 6.30 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We won't be drunk people at the gun shop at night. On that event. No. <laughs> 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 So that's my proposal is we uh, agree this in principle for the March event only, subject to the town clerk bringing a report to full council with a bit more research information and detail on the timings and the music and you know, perhaps alcohol as well. That's second. I'll second that. Mm -hmm. All those in favour? So next is date and time of next meeting, Monday the 18th of March, 6.30. That's the end of the Finance and General Purposes Committee.